Welcome to the Icon. Today I have with us a very renowned artist, a researcher, a scholar, a social worker. All fit into one personality, Dr. Patnajat Suresh. Namaste. Namaste Lovely to have you on our show today. Thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am, there's so much to ask you. I don't know where to begin, uh, but tell us about your Australia visit this, this time. Oh yes, so I'm here uh, on a two-week tour and I have been enjoying uh, every moment of it. So it has been interspersed with the performance, Rasanu Bhava, that was put up together by a centre of dance here called Sindhu Bhairavi followed by workshops that I have been conducting to the dance students from the same fraternities, some other schools of Bharatanatyam and also non bharatanatyam students have been picking up a few dance choreographies and we are completing the tour on Saturday with a lecture demonstration based on my topic of research which is uh, Yantra, Mantra and Tantra. So, I wish to go back with a lot of fond memories back here. Talking about uh, Yantra, Mantra and Tantra, uh, they are all in a way connected but it, it is so diverse when you, you know, look deeper into it. Uh, tell us how do you connect the whole concept into Natya? So fortunately I belong to a family where uh, arts has been very much a part like my great grandfather was the very celebrated Maddalam Vengicha Swami of Kadamandalam. And uh, my father was a mono act theatre expert called Chakyar Kunturaj and belonging to non Chakyar family but having professed the art widely in India and throughout the world. So before he departed from this uh, earthly realm, when he was absolutely unwell and I had completed my master's, I'm giving you a background of how it started. He told me to go in for a study of Tantra mm -hmm. and uh, we are all belonging to Kerala where there is a lot of Bhagavad Gita. Tantra culture is more. Yes, like in the matrilineal parts of the country like Bengal, Assam and uh, mm -hmm. Kerala. So, uh, where the Bhagavati worship was very uh, prominent and then we shifted to one part of uh, uh, you know, Kerala which is closer to Tamil Nadu. So, we are the border people so called. And in the process we also shifted from worshipping typically Bhagavati to Vengada Ajaravati. Mm. So, my father... Why is Kerala? Uh, no, I was brought up in Bombay. Throughout, and my father also had shifted from the shore to Bombay to establish himself as a cost accountant to management consultant to great repute, mm -hmm. along with doing Chakyar Kuntu in Malayalam theatre and some Malayalam movies. Mm -hmm. So, we were all uh, accustomed to having all this in the uh, family, and we had a great Namacharya guru from Guruvayur as our family guru. Mm -hmm. But uh, father, before he passed away, brought to my knowledge that since we have shifted from our uh, allegiance to worshipping the Devi and the Tantric elements to the Balaji worship, like all the Tamil Ayers uh, have done, mm -hmm. why don't you take up a study to fall back and ask yourself what was the kind of worship we used to do, what were the mudra and temple? gestures and I'm sure you will find a correlation between your dance gestures and these Tantra Mudras. So saying he gave, uh, gave me the visiting card of Tantra Vidya Pitam uh, Aluwa's uh, head mm -hmm. whom he was knowing I believe and uh, believe me uh, after he passed away it was a lot of unsolicited blessings as if uh, the divine <laughs> interference yes, yes mm -hmm. intervention Intervent. for a positive uh, purpose in the form of books or objects people I meet so not only Kerala I went up to Sikkim and all over gathered as many inputs as possible basically about the hand movements and the mudras mm -hmm. and also uh, going back to Vajrayana Buddhism mm -hmm. ways of worshipping the gods mm -hmm. so it all centered upon how the goddess is the predominant force 
were just enacting the world drama. And then I was coming closer to the Tantra yogis who have given us commentaries uh, from the Kashmir Shaiva school of dance and the Shaiva Siddhantars of uh, Tamil Nadu who gave Chidambaram Nadarajas and the deeper aspects and the esoteric significance of all these. So then uh, after a while with the guidance of uh, philosophy department head in Mysore I could complete my PhD. But after another four or five years completing the PhD is when I felt that I was, you know, having so, I was on the tip of an iceberg wow. where there's so much more to be found unraveled and it has been a beautiful, unbelievably uh, fulfilling journey so far. I can imagine like you know, with the few words that you know you have just quoted, and you know, certain key elements that I I grasp from there. There is so much more that I could ask you, just based on you know, Devi, Shakti, Prakriti, and you know, there is it's all so interconnected, and uh, it's it's a beautiful twist. You know how from you know the Vedic culture you move back to discover the Tantric culture. Uh, however, when you go back to mudras, we we understand that you know for for a land like ours, uh, Bharata worship, everything is so connected, like uh, whether be it yoga, be it dance, be it uh, the tantric culture and all of these uh, use mudras. Uh, sometimes we call it by different names uh, but then you know each mudra has, a, has the power uh, to do a certain thing which is why it's used in tantric culture and which is why it is used in yoga. However in dance we used to communicate. Uh, have, uh, after your study, what, what was your understanding of... Uh, so when you call it a yantra, mm. it means a mystical diagram. So yes. for people who worship uh, through tantra modes, they have a mystical diagram, diagram. which is drawn on a plate, mm. often called as Shri Chakra. Shri there are Shiva Chakra, there are Shakti Chakras, there are several other kind of mm. yantric models. But Shri Chakra is... So it's a mathematical representation of... The, uh, Mathematics is a part of it, uh, mm -hmm. dance, uh, sacred geometry is a part of it. Uh, over and above that, there is mantra diksha given, that is mm -hmm. with the repeated uh, manifestation of, because as every religion says, it all starts started from the sound vibration. Sound. The sound became a word, mm -hmm. the word became a sentence, a sentence became a poem, mm -hmm. it became a song became a dance, became the whole universe. Right. So everything has come out of the sound vibration which we call as the uh, dance of Shiva and Shakti. Mm -hmm. So from that consciousness energy dance mm -hmm. came out or is continuously dancing the cosmic. Uh, Shiva is all the time reverberating with this dance with Shakti. Mm -hmm. Now when the mantra you are reciting Mantras are repeated. It's not like a stotra or a stuti which is yeah. in uh, description. Yeah. Here you have it's some a short phrase which is yes, repeated. and some seed syllables mm. which seed have got a lot of uh, mm. potency. So mm. when you're repeatedly doing that with the yantra, mm. the tantra is the science. Right. It will also include the uh, mudras in it. Mm. Your communication on a level in which you find the priests who are close to the uh, deity and they are giving prana pratishta, invoking the life force. Yes. Exactly is what is happening to the dancers in a way and I'm sure the temple dancers followed that very strictly. They adhered to certain rules and uh, ways of life as well austerities to be observed before you are on stage. So the entire, the yantra within the artist, the yantra which is drawn on the stage platform, the Nati Shastra Nati speaks Shastra. of all those mandalas, mystical diagrams, 36, all those holy numbers, 108, even the kinds of theatres, he says 32, 64, 108. And the dimensions of the structure which is yes. similar. So they were all the, Bharata himself was a Trika Shaiva Yogi. So we are 
modeling ourselves akin to the universe like a microcosm with a macrocosmic very much dancing as a nartaka atma mm. taking the people with the chit atma the level of shakti mm. from the nara or the lowermost pashu mm. to the pasha level which is shakti the one that binds mm. the chitta atma level you are ascending to the chaitanya atma right like jiva which is the shiva to paramatma so the chaitanya the faces i am giving you the typical shaivik uh, terms used are mm. the actor mm. in the world drama plays the role right using various characters mm. so there is this third person fourth person fifth person etc etc all that is being enacted in the objective world mm. from that chitta level you are transcend into the chaitanya mm. chaitanya is the shiva mm. where ultimately there is no person at all right and that is a constant ascent and a descent happening on stage from the cross to the subtlest subtlest to the cross the same way the spectator is out there a sakrudaya prekshaka with no conditioned mind mm. he is connecting to this stream of rasa mm. so we are touching That. upon advaita philosophy absolutely yes. but you are using the uh, tactics strategies of tantric uh, yeah. he says thai bhava sanchari bhava vimchari mm. bhava vibhava anubhava stai bhava is very very potent force which is there which is what we all see as you know the elements of navarasas yes which is getting uh, decorated with all these uh, additional determinants consequences are expressed in many ways but beyond all this expression there is only one rasa hmm is chit ek rasa roop ne they call the day hmm. right is in that chitta from that level when you go to chaitanya you become the subject and you are observing everything and you are happy that you have cried you are very happy that you have shed ananda all the tears ananda. so that ananda roopa which comes chit ananda mm. to that level you are able to transcend so what bharata says purusharthas are all mm. achieved through this mm. so dharma artha kama moksha so moksha. what is the liberating force is there is no division thereafter it is all advaitam satyam mm-hmm. at the end that you are able to reach that force because of which even a person who is lost almost all his faculty is able to still discover that one taste of oneness between himself and the audience and the actor even a child which is bereft of any new vasanas who doesn't know can still identify this mm. and be taken into that stream of mm. rasa mm. so there are these five stages of vinava gupta the tantrika yogi says that you pass through the sensory level right. because perception is what catches i if i may if i may interrupt you for a moment you know just just getting back to you know the purpose of natya you know how how we have uh, the chaturvarna and how people you know of only a particular varna understand you know certain literature but however when you bring it to natya it is for everyone absolutely that's why it is a tantra the veda became a tantra right so open to everyone beyond any barriers yeah so i the kind of service that you do as an uh, as an artist uh, to you know convey all these messages through through a medium of dance that's that's really wonderful uh i understand that you also have a you know a very strong uh, social responsibility correct as a uh, th- th- was that always a part of your philosophy of course you know being a spiritual person that you are it should be but i'd like to know more about it so when i was a child in bombay traveling in a lot of local trains i used to find a lot of children there singing with perfect rhythm yeah. you know with uh, the the for begging for arms and i always thought if i'm able to come to a level where i feel a sense of happiness mm-hmm. that i have done so much before i go ahead let me start giving back to society 
So that happened in Bangalore and I started off with the local coconut vendor next door's daughter yeah. and we enrolled a lot of government school children. So I felt very happy, fulfilling kind of dance becoming useful because I used to always feel that a dance which was very common in the rural parts of South India which was given to people as a guru, you know, with the, as a guru kula, mm. went on through a lot of problems which, you know, historically it was removed and mm. things like that. And today it has come to such a level that only the elite so-called children are able to get it. Mm. Uh, all the big cities, whether it is USA or So in what way are you making it inclusive? What percentage of the population is getting it? If you are able to do a lot of larger good and well-being through this great potential force which is not only therapeutic, it can remove social evils, it can bring in character, discipline, altogether liberating force, those are the higher ends but the basic changes it can bring about. That also, if you are going to maintain that sense of exclusivity, in what way are you doing any service? Right. So that made me, you know, look back on that and I'm sure a lot of people have followed suit thereafter or they may have done even beforehand. But uh, the fact that our children were able to go right up to the Rashtrapati Bhavan and shake hands with the President of India Dr. Abdul Kalam, children who were chosen, literally living only in the slums, chosen to perform before the president. So those made headlines in a lot of places and people who challenged me saying that, you know, in Tamil there is a statement, Atte Tukki Mette Levekyade. These are children who don't even have the basic uh, knowledge of what is good and bad. How are you? So that kind of, uh, what do you, that, you know, I, this is a dance for elite, a so-called class that I tried to break and I've succeeded to a good extent and have children from all these uh, communities, even non-Hindu communities. I try to tell them that, you know, you have to wear this and this as a uniform mm. for it. Mm. You come out, you remove it, but you please understand, though it is a religious text, an agamic sure. text or the Natya, it goes beyond this uh, doctrine of religion or right. dogma of religion. Because right. as I said earlier about Rasa, going to such a spiritual level that you are able to transcend from the smallest to the highest. So that way a good lot of them were convinced they became a part of it and we have a good team that has been working consistently for all these years. And our workshops are taken not only in rural parts of Karnataka, like some of the Haldi villages, but we have gone right up to Leh, Ladakh to teach children belonging to Mahabodhi societies who were orphaned because of a cloud burst. We went to Kairagar, which is the most underdeveloped part of India, and taught over there some children were extremely talented. So I try and keep as much sustainable practice with them mm -hmm. nowadays on Skype but at the same time or visits at least twice a year at the same time we are awakening or kindling an awareness mm -hmm. about Indian dance right. which can take them you know suddenly one child can be born with an inspiration to become a great artist we know the history of so many great artists of the country right. Not all of them were born with a silver spoon or they all struggled so much and right. so that kind of awareness we are able to create. So the kind of you want to give something comes when you automatically when spirituality should make you in a way detached. You have to go around with the world. I am travelling to all these parts of the world as well and doing it for so many people who want to take it. But looking back and seeing like Satvikam Shivam, mm. your subjective character that don't get attached or bound by any of these things. This is your role that you are destined to play. Right. So that awareness and Viveka Buddhi we should aspire to. I am trying. Mm. Wow.
wow, it's it's beautiful to see how you know uh, you have actually been able to transcend transcend from the manomaya to you know the vijnana maya, and you're almost there to the ananda maya kosha there. Uh, yes, but very much still in the uh, uh, what do you say as you said uh, prana maya and then uh, jnana maya. All that is it's all the sheets you cannot. Uh, You have to live in the body and, the, oh, and have yeah. the Within requirement. For for a normal person, you know, their level of understanding might only only reach up to their manomaya. You know, beyond that, for dance, you have to make it a point that uh, make the children. I'm sure you can catch them young and tell them the ha- importance of the hand gestures every time. Not teach it like a literal spelling and how to, but you have to make them understand the meaning behind how the deity is keeping it. What happens when you're doing an opening or when you're doing a full sitting? What kind of a geometric design is it? Mm-hmm. How In, is it connected to the art? To the yeah. Art mm-hmm. and make them realize that there's scientific value in the art. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, people divorce science away from art. Mm-hmm. So this is the science is employed very much on this level to be able to go beyond the science where science cannot look. and that artistic level can take you to the super level that you are in. so i'm sure if you teach with that in mind and we you are also have to do sadhana every day i say in spite of doing researching or social working or whatever first the dancer first the artist i have to do my riyas every day at least for an hour to two hours maintain yourself well mm-hmm. Only then you can become an instrument which can transmit that energy. Right. right. The, there is a lot of uh, like uh, senior gurus. Like just when you said that, you know, sadhne. Some people take it for granted that you know I can I can teach and that becomes my sadhne. I don't have to do my practice. Uh, But when you teach, like the gurus we have learned from my guru is all the Natuna our families guru Kalyan Sundaram has been my mentor guru. I was with Kala Mandalam Rajarishmi teacher as a baby, and I started my dance first steps. Then, of course, so many senior gurus I have learned. I have been lucky to see all of them get up mm. and show me their steps. They may not have gone on to stage as full-time performers, mm. but they have been able to demonstrate mm. and show it, and keeping themselves fit. Mm. All the gurus who I had direct contact with. were all practitioners in their own way so even if they are teaching they used to be able to demonstrate and keep themselves well and they weren't like uh, neglecting their own health because that is very important is you have to become the change that you want to want. see right so if you want your student to be like someone who is so sparkling on stage you can jump even if i cannot do it if if my age goes beyond like my gurus used to be at that time they used to keep giving me that energy and say you have to do it and for that they have to get up and show that they want to do it or they have done it in that time yeah in their life so they were made as performers because that was a rule that the natunars were taught how to teach but they were all by even the dancers were very good in learning all the shastras there were 72 items in the temple that you were dancing mm-hmm. and uh, they knew all the agamas they knew the singing they knew to play the veena they were all a part of the lessons mm-hmm. so it was like not uh, today not like we do outsourcing from here <laughs> there uh, you know like a cafeteria and then you are putting something on the desk that this is what i'm producing no there was bahusha shastra knowledge of this that even architecture ayurveda sculpture mm. everything was known mm. so when you have evolved like that the fact is that today of the courage to speak is definitely because of the guru parampara that the, the gurus have instilled that kind of knowledge and over and about that of course it was not that tantra came from that parampara because i personally also know that natya shastra doesn't speak of all these esoteric aspects mm-hmm. 
because the Bharata says that it is an art which is for public for consumption. Public. They hmm? devoid it of all the. It, it is there in it, implied in it. Many a time he makes indirect references yes. to the uh, to the uh, metaphysical aspects. There is mm. an uh, imaginative uh, sacred. Uh, the thirty six chapters also go with the Trika model. But if you are going to start telling them that you know there is this chakra mm. in this adavu and all that, the children are going to get confused. Mm. So there is a level to which you have to tap first. And then that's how my sir, there is, you see, keep like this. Mm. They wouldn't talk of terms like Brahma Sutra in that manner. Right. Mm. But they were aware of it. Yeah. To what extent you should. So it's like they just give you, you know, a bait. A little element. But if the student is good, it is her duty to. Like my guru says, I after all these years, did I teach you this? I said, sir, you opened that, that vision Bath. in me. So today I am in Melbourne because I have a student whom I have touched upon with that core, this uh, dancer here called Chandana. Mm. So they have watched me dancing, teaching them. I used to always be a performer. So they have an added, uh, whether they call it as a benchmark from their point of view, or if it's an asset or a misfortune that the teacher is always dancing. Mm -hmm. In a way, from my side, I try to fulfill, if at all there was something as a lacune that I felt, mm -hmm. my student should be. Because today's generation is not what was what even was. mine or before mine. Mm -hmm. And for them, the next generation, I see the youngest lot learning, mm -hmm. it's not going to be you know, it's quite a challenge to make them realize that put your footwear out, do namaskaram. namaskaram. When you do namaskaram, you are learning not a blackboard to the textbook kind of lesson. Right. You are learning something where I am transmitting to you the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So these are the additional challenges you have to, you, they have to ask questions. I tell the younger generation, I that time is gone where, you know, you, you have, have to have respect quiet. but you cannot ask. But here they need to ask. I am encouraging that interrogator. But the asking should not be with a view just to have fun or try to hook someone in the wrong way. Right. And it right. should be with a, a sense, interest. In interest. Yeah. Then I'm sure the student will be able to open up her own, uh, her own level. That's how it's the art of assisting self discovery. I will say. Mm -hmm. um, um, one thing that I wanted to ask you, you are an ace performer, you are a practicing artist. Do you perform for your audience or do you perform for yourself? Both. I am definitely performing for the audience when I am in a stage. But the number of people doesn't make a difference to me. It can be one or it can be a thousand. So that's because I am primarily dancing for the Shiva consciousness. When I say Sahasraksha, Indra and Natya Shastra is mm. watching, it means Indra is already represented a thousand eyes there. Mm -hmm. So there are the Gandharvas, the whole you are going into that level. Mm -hmm. So if there is one or two or uh, uh, thousands, mm -hmm. it is all one and the same. I have to deliver the goods there and the stage to me has become an image of the Brahmanda. Mm -hmm. Again, the Sri Chakra I am doing to justice to the great poets mm. who have devoted their entire life. The compositions came with such, such a divine bhakti. Mm. I am lucky to be able to perform it every time. Mm. So I am trying to give that rasa out from that to this, from the seed. I shouldn't change the seed mm. and present something else. Mm. So from that level, the fruit is on to the spirit. I am a patra, a vessel that is carrying and I can deliver only if I am overflowing right. and it flows out. So it is like a magical web to me. Number of people doesn't matter. The audience is as much Brahman for me if it is in me. Even the smallest creature over there, if it is able to reverberate, they say in the, the text that music touches even the other beings mm -hmm. like the word with Krishna's flute mm -hmm. so it is the cosmic uh, thing which you are replicating on stage so why should it make any difference now you have traveled the uh, world around with your art uh, how have you uh, found it 
trying to communicate these concepts to the newer generation in Australia? So far, so good. I've been uh, demonstrating and uh, picking up uh, well. And uh, I think uh, I think that if not me, the students who have the true torch bearers can continue this effort. Sooner or later, we will we will be able to bring about my my end view is I'm presently connected with an organization called Tatwalak of the Shringeri Mat, mm -hmm. where we are doing bringing about Ram Rajya mm -hmm. vision and values through dance mm -hmm. world over. Mm -hmm. So uh, the higher goal, I'm sure, if your intention is good. Wherever you are, even it, let it be in one remote part of India or USA or Melbourne, the blessings, because you are just doing the work which the higher power is is entered upon. Yes, I, I do not think it is Padmaja or this birth at all. Mm. The purpose for which you know presently I'm carrying on is being, like I said, the way Father put on the Devi, this thing, mm. and then how it opened up. The way I've uh, been able to last few months has been every week there is a trip. Mm. Whether it was uh, Patna or Ranchi, last month we were in Europe, we came to the President of India is coming to Iceland. Mm. There was a performance by my team there. And then I went to Hamburg, I have been to places where it is totally socialist character, like the eastern parts of. Uh, Baltic nations close to St. Petersburg and there, there is no belief at all and if it is Bharatanatyam also it was only taken for the form mm -hmm. but I've been able to touch upon them and if the students there and make them realize that it is the higher consciousness and this is an, an art which is traveled through yugas and yugas don't pin it on recent history date right right so we have, we are all, you know, our predecessors, whether you are, you know, of a different skin color, have all been the uh, celestials. So be proud of that uh, lineage and bring about this higher uh, self through this. Forget all these small differences. So I, I think uh, if you are able to surrender and say the work is from the divine force and you are just one, you also have a limited, right? All of us have a limited time. We are all bound by time. But it is about the timeless. And the moment you are on stage as Shiva, you get that timeless and spaceless consciousness onto you. So I think Australia has so far been good. And I'm only praying, I keep praying and try to give the positive vibration wherever I am invited. Ma'am, as a researcher, there are uh, a lot of uh, articles that you have been publishing. Yes. And uh, you're a frequent uh, uh, a writer. Dance column. Yes. Dance column. So this article that I'm writing under the broad uh, heading of Metaphysics in Natya mm. was in uh, most of the uh, edition of uh, one of the leading newspapers back at home and it's also online available. So. There have been places where in conferences and in seminars I'm coming across even some uh, students who do refer to it, who are interested in finding out about the deeper aspects of Natya and uh, such things. And I have um, been fortunate to be blessed by some very great gurus who are all such big names in the dance field and they have also suggested that uh, students of Natya should refer. So metaphysics in Natya and be, uh, besides that on several other journals, I try to put these ideas across and uh, somewhere if it is making a difference, uh, I'm sure that the purpose of Natya is something that all these artists, even if you make so many trips through continents, do you make a trip within yourself? 
are you discovering within you the levels of energy when you're doing even a basic nritta in three different speeds mm. after the fourth speed which is that speed which you cannot dance mm. which you cannot even recite right. but that is what nataraja symbolizes that incessant mm. sound uh, vibration that frequency which you cannot even catch so do we meditate on that element of silence which is also a part of the dance drama when there is a freeze the freeze is not static it is a freeze which is so much Born out more of speed mind. yes like a karana should be explained mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. so those are the aspects where dancers need to ask themselves when i'm holding a gesture if i'm doing an abhinaya how can it be soft and lyrical and fluid because i'm giving a message out right but if i'm doing a nritta like a structure or geometry mm-hmm. i should hold it also firm not rigid but firm enough mm-hmm. only then my entire nerves get the benefit mm-hmm. so if it is the agni agni tattva or your prithvi tattva so all these the mud- how are the mudras hmm. this is for the earth ah. element the one that emphasizes your ego hmm. and that's why in worship also you give gandha hmm. through this hmm. this is the akasha element hmm. and this is the vayu and this is the agni and this is the jala jala so all these are activated when you are doing the hasta mudra so like when you do in worship also lam uh, prithviyatmikai gandham samarpayami mm. hum akash even when we are doing certain uh, gestures right. you should try to reflect how Why how much you are you using your thumb mm. for what all are you using your thumb mm. akashatmikai pushpam samarpayami vayuat धूपम समर्पयामि अग्नि आत्मिकाय दीपम समर्पयामि दी फायर योर रिंग फिंगर योर अग्नि साक्षी देन द लास्ट वन वम फॉर योर जल तत्व फॉर व्हिच नैवेद्यम यू आर गिविंग सो ऑल दीस दे यूज्ड टू वर्शिप द देव अलिगर्स फॉर डूइंग द कुंभारती एज पर द आगमिक टेक्स्ट इन द टेंपल्स they knew every part of worship so the artists we all have to try our level best to see if with the available resources with the available possibilities our aim to get on to stage everywhere is not going to is again a limited uh, aspiration it's not going to be the end for which this kale has been gifted to you so look it as a journey to enhance your own self realizing possibilities and take your audience this is not for we know the karana uh-huh. that is a corrupted version of the text mm-hmm. this is definitely natyam tanmukti sadaka mm-hmm. you are getting an opportunity for getting mukti mm-hmm. so the artist should go into herself to think of these lines of what she is doing in the nritta what is she doing in the abhinaya if you are doing an ashtapadi of jayadeva mm-hmm. the erotic beauty element cannot be reduced to a sensuous aspect hello mm. that aspect should be made with such a level of sublime experience mm. from the maturity of the artistic representation right that the end result mm. should be somewhere close to what they they were had planned absolutely absolutely oh i love that <laughs> so this is where you have to analyze that getting a bureaucrat or uh, you know in common persons uh, applause 
is a side effect. What to say? For whom are you doing? Shiva is your sakshi. Are you doing this? You have to do it with that feeling for consummation. Jivatma, Paramatma, the Varnam takes you for that. You are seeking that. And the rasa was to be evoked in the deity. They did not want to have headlines and uh, morning this thing that tomorrow I have to be featured, I have to be uh, the, the, the synosure of all eyes, I am the diva. It was not so. She was an adigar. She was a dasi. So, to this extent, evolution, making it uh, all round a revolution and uh, uh, that is not a good positive trend. Mm. So we have to ask ourselves, are we worthy of it? Mm. What are we giving? I will be gone. What is the next generation what going to do? Mm. What have I left behind as a legacy? Yes. So these are the things which one has to ponder and rework on oneself. Ma'am, it's, it's been such a wonderful experience talking to you. And I know we can go uh, for much longer, there is so much I would love to learn from you, so much more that you know our audience would love to hear from you. But uh, due to the restrictions that we have based on our time here, limited time, uh, we look forward to reading your columns and being in touch with you. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for your time. Thank you very much.